Hey guys, how's everyone doing tonight? This is the uh, sort of the big data update version or component of the evening. Um, so first off, I just actually really want to start out just like sort of double eye roll, uh, groans. I am a venture capitalist, number one. And number two, I focus on big data. Um, obviously, big data is a fairly common term these days. Uh, popular in USA Today and other uh, fine, fine, insightful uh, publications. <laughs> um, so, but I actually think that sort of in the context of sort of the, the hack for big choices, it's interesting how I got to, to, to come here. So I'm an environmental scientist by training. And back in 2007, I became interested. I started seeing these massive data sets in the energy industry, sort of these data sets that are thrown off by, by buildings when you're looking at building efficiency. Um, and there were, you know, they were starting to break you know, traditional databases and there weren't really ways to, to crunch it. So I came up with the idea of looking at sort of the, the overlap of the Venn diagram of clean tech plus big data. Um, as it turns out, that was not an overwhelmingly interesting thesis at that time because you need, I th you know, basically you needed more uh, clean tech winners to emerge before you could build an analytics layer on top. But that sort of drew me into the, the world of, of big data. Um, and I just became enamored with it, began investing and advising um, early stage big data companies, helping data scientists build, build companies. Um, and then it sort of took me, you know, that, that rolled along and then I've got my, my venture fund now called Data Collective. We, uh, oops, um, so, you know, is big data a real thing? Is it sort of a washed out term? And I'll say, it, I mean, it is a washed out term, but it absolutely is a real thing. And the way I think about it, is 90% of the world's data was pr created in the past two years. So what was going on two years ago? One, you know, Occupy Wall Street. And the other one was actually, as they just referenced, Steve Jobs died. I actually didn't realize that this was to coincide, for the, co to coincide with the, the anniversary, but that my re you know, I was researching. And just, it seems like just yesterday when these things were going on, and literally when that was going on, 10% of the, of the data exists than exists today. So it's just, you know, thinking about that, so it's just a remarkable, uh, just how quickly, you know, this is accelerating. Um, the way, uh, also, you know, that's also when the, the iPhone 4S came out. So you can also just think about it in terms of uh, iPhone product cycles. So just about every product cycle is about 90% more data in the world. Um, so, you know, where are we now? Um, you know, you, we're starting to hear things like, uh, like Harper Reed, uh, the CTO of, of Obama's uh, technical campaign, saying big data is solved. Um, they, you know, they did a remarkable thing. They created a persuadability score for every single voter in the country, 200 million people looking at hundreds of different uh, inputs to, to see how persuadable these individual voters were, sometimes rerunning their models hundreds of times a night. A true big data problem that was truly effective as we saw, saw the results. So what does he mean, you know, big data is solved? Uh, I think what he's getting at is that the sort of infrastructure that we can build, you know, these big data solutions on is actually starting to become um, commoditized. It's starting to become readily available. These aren't elegant solutions and there's still a lot a lot more work to be done, but um, the sort of the Hadoop e ecosystem is enabling you know, many more people to have access to sort of these big data solutions. Um, you know, and you know, a remarkable fact about the, the big data uh, world is that it moves so rapidly from cutting edge to commodity, um, and that's just something you guys should think about as you were sort of attacking these, these big world problems. Um, five years ago, Facial recognition was, was cutting edge. That was deep ML, um, deep tech, and now it's, it's a commodity. I, I get bet no one out here has a phone, much less a camera, that doesn't have facial recognition software. It just sort of that's the, the progression that's incredibly rapid. So where does that take us today? This is how we look at the, the, the big data stack from uh, an investment perspective. The bottom two layers are the analytics layer and the infrastructure layer, and these are the things that, that Harper was talking about that are you know, relatively becoming solved. There's still a lot of work to be done, but which is interesting for sort of hack for big choices is that that means that, and it's our belief that the, the top layer, the application layer, is where the fireworks are right now, uh, which means that we can start 
not thinking about the, the plumbing, but thinking about how to apply this to, to solve some of our, uh, the problems in the world. And I will point out um, up there on the top is, uh, is Kaggle, and you'll hear from, uh, from Jeremy later. Um, um, and you know, part of what's, what's making this um, you know, revolution happen is sort of the real-time nature of data. You know, we can actually start to make decisions in, in real time. Um, and, you know, we think of, you know, agriculture as kind of a hidebound, traditional as they come, vertical industry, but they, it's actually, they are sprinting to embrace the big data technology, which is remarkable given that it's um, such an old line industry. And the, you know, the Monsanto deal really, you know, highlights how important uh, the, the, this, this revolution is. Um, and you know what actually, and I, you know, so how do I think about that transaction? Um, I actually think about it from the perspective of a farmer. Farmers today look a lot more like me than probably what you you envision. Um, they have you know they have their fields, their block of fields, and they build Excel models to to harness their data, and they they basically are yearning for more big data to be able to optimize their yields. Yields are about their, or their profit margin is about 1%, so you know, it's a razor-thin margin, um, and any little tricks they can use to, to improve yield is, is amazing. It's a trillion-dollar market, um, and also, you know, as we're going to 9 billion people, we're not going to be able to feed enough people on the planet. Um, in the 90s, sort of GMO and, you know, you know, however you feel about that, and GPS and those breakthroughs let us sort of continue the, the green revolution and the next step is going to be precision agriculture driven by, by uh, big, big data methodologies. So another way I, I like to sort of think about the evolution of the, the industry is to look back sort of at my portfolio. This is one of my earliest portfolio companies. It's called Aware. And they use satellite data, just these massive satellite data sets, to do mosquito abatement. So they can basically look at a body of water and based on the spectral signature of this body of water, like a swimming pool, they can tell whether there's mosquito larvae in there. Mosquitoes are tremendous optimizers. In a, in a given body of water, 90% of the mosquito larvae will be in 1% of the surface area. So this is also a true clean tech play because it enables people to, to uh, use much less pesticides. In this country, it's a billion dollar industry basically for nuisance. But the rest of the world, um, it's a much larger problem because there are disease vectors as well. Part of the problem with, with this company, or a bottleneck they hit, was they bought their data from a satellite company called uh, Digital Globe. Um, and it was incredibly slow, because they had to call up Digital Globe and say, please point your satellites at you know, this swath of land, or you know, Nevada, or wherever, the, Mississippi, wherever they were looking. And you know, if it was cloudy that day, you were out of luck. Um, it started, you know, it was just sort of too slow, you know, not real time enough. So, but they're still, they're still chugging along, they're doing great. Um, but then fast forward to today, one of, our other or one of our recent portfolio companies is called Planet Labs. These guys are based right here in San Francisco in Soma, probably you know, a couple miles from here. Former NASA engineers have built microsatellites about the size of a loaf of bread. The, uh, and they have solar panels that, that fold out. They've already launched, uh, after only being around for two years, they've launched two into orbit. Um, and next year they're launching a uh, constellation of them to be able to image the planet once a day um, down to two or three meter resolution, which is remarkable. And if you do any higher resolution, you'll get visits from you know, three-letter three -letter agency men in skinny black ties. So <laughs> they're happy, they happy here. Um, but this has tremendous, um, and here's some actual pictures sent back from, from space. But this has tremendous applications, being able to see this data real time for NGO, not just for industry, but for NGOs. Uh, deforestation, illegal mining, you know, what have you. So this is really uh, an example of, of big data that will revolutionize sort of as how we attack the, these big problems that we're facing in the world. Um, and that sort of brings me back to, uh, and I guess there's going to be topics announced, but brings us back to the, uh, the hackathon that's, that's coming up. And I actually sort of thought that, sat down and thought about the three areas and where areas of inquiry are for, for data collective. Um, and we thought that, you know, in terms of the design and technology, you know, we're rapidly moving to the mobile web. So 
the World Wide Web became interesting because, you know, and sort of gave us Google by just the index of, of keywords, you know, among other things. Where the mobile web's going is we need someone to do an index, uh, a contextual index, because you don't care as much about just the keywords. You, wanna, you, know, you want your phone to know where you are and what you're doing and it to be contextual, which is a map, you know, people are nibbling at pieces of this, but it's a massive big data problem that's sort of yet to be solved. Um, education, obviously we're, we're rapidly going to a more digitized, um, digitized process of learning, but we're still teaching kids the way we've done it for you know, hundreds of years. Um, I think that this is, you know, once we start gathering this data, we'll be actually be able to see different ways that, that kids learn at different ages. So that's another area of inquiry possibly for the hackathon to, to attack. Um, and then finally, you know, in, in healthcare, we're at the front edge of, of personalized medicine. Um, and part of that that we're, we're particularly interested in is the microbiome. Your body is, um, has 10 times more bacteria cells in it than it does human cells. And those bacteria have 100 times more DNA. So your interaction with those bacteria is almost more important for your health than your interaction with the rest of the world. It's, it's a hot topic right now. I don't think there's a scientist out there that's not writing a paper about the microbiome. But we've, uh, we've really only scratched the surface and, you know, about how to sort of categorize and classify these families of, of, of bacteria and also viruses that live in and support our, our health. So uh, lots of big problems out there. Um, and hopefully all you hackers at the hackathons can, can solve them. Thanks. Thank you.